containerization is perhaps the biggest revolution for application deployment that has taken place in the last decade. But do you know what percentage of containers currently running in production have either high or critical vulnerabilities? Maybe 10, 20%? Well, you might be surprised, but the answer according to the Cloud Native Security Report released earlier this year is 87%. Yikes. So why is this number so high? Well, there's a fundamental rule that I believe is an inherent part of technology. Every solution creates new problems. And in my opinion, this rule holds true for containers. Containers have brought us many solutions, such as portability, consistency, isolation, efficiency, and scalability. But we also have a number of new challenges to tackle because of containerization. Challenges such as orchestration, where we now have multiple containers running across multiple machines or persistence and state management due to the ephemeral nature of containers. Most notably, however, is the increased code complexity, of which is the main reason for the large percentage of containers with vulnerabilities. Let me explain. All software has bugs, of which a subset are exploitable. These kind of bugs are known as vulnerabilities. Containers not only package up their own application software, they also package up the system libraries and the operating system as a whole. Therefore, this increases the total software footprint inside the container, which increases the likelihood of a vulnerability existing. So what can you do about it? Well, there's a number of tools that provide a process called container image scanning, which is used to detect vulnerabilities within containerized applications. In this video, we're going to look at two of these tools, Sift and Gripe, which work together to break down the problem into two distinct stages. This differs from other tools, but it provides a good context into how container scanning works under the hood. So without further ado, let's jump on into it. The first tool we're going to look at is Sift, which is used for producing something called a software bill of materials. If you're not sure what that is, don't worry. It'll become pretty clear in a minute. Let's go ahead and use Sift to generate one. First, install Sift as per your operating system. You can check out the installation instructions on their GitHub page. I'm using Arch, by the way, so I'll install using Pac-Man. With Sift installed, we now need a Docker image we can use for scanning. Fortunately, I made one earlier using this Docker file. This Docker file is building a Go application, which is a web server, which is running on port 8080. The Docker image for this file has been built and published to a GitHub registry, so you're able to run this yourself. But the source code is also available if you're interested. You can find the link in the description. With our Docker image set up, we can now generate our software bill of materials. To do so, head back to your terminal and run the following command. After a short while, you should receive an output, which is a list of all of the software inside of our container. This is our software bill of materials, also known as an SBOM. If we take a look at this list, we can see the SIFT breaks down this information into three columns. The first being the name of the software. The second is the version of that software. And the third is the type of which we have four different ones. The majority type are Go modules, which are either dependencies of our Go application or part of the base Go installation. In production, you most likely wouldn't have the base Go installation, as it's a good practice to use multi-stage builds within Docker, but we're keeping them here just for demonstration purposes. The second most common type is APK, which are the packages installed by our images base operating system, Alpine Linux. Next, we have a couple of binary types. The first being the actual Go binary of 1.20.3, and the second being BusyBox. Finally, the last type is a single NPM package, which is used for charting profile data from Go. Taking a look at the full software bill of materials and scrolling down to the Go modules, we can see that our container is using the Jin web server, and the version is 1.4.0. We also have a few other dependencies such as YAML, Protobuf, and SSE. You'll also notice that we're using the Go 1.20.3 binary. So this is pretty cool. And having this software bill of materials gives us a nice overview of what software our container has inside. But this doesn't tell us if any of our dependencies have vulnerabilities or not. We could run through each entry and check them against NIST, which is the database for CVEs, but this would be very tedious. Fortunately, we can use another tool to automate this. Before we look at that tool, however, let's go ahead and save our SBOM to disk. This prevents us from having to rescan our image every time we want to produce our software bill of materials. As containers are immutable, nothing will change anyway. To do so, we just run the same command as we did earlier, but add the O flag, which stands for output. Inside this flag, we provide the desired format, which is Cyclone DXJSON, of which is pretty much industry standard. 
and the output's file name, in our case, sbomb.json. Once that's done, you can take a look at the output in a text editor, if you like, but it's not the most user-friendly. Best to let machines work with JSON, in my opinion. With our sbomb saved, we can now move on to our next tool for container scanning. Before we do, however, I just want to take a quick moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, NordPass Business. As this video has hopefully made you aware, exploits are everywhere, and they pose a constant threat to any business. But how can you not only keep your passwords safe, but also your credit cards and confidential notes while actively protecting against data breaches? Well, NordPass has you covered. NordPass for Business is the perfect platform for protecting your digital wealth. NordPass provides a highly rated password management solution for teams, allowing you to set company-wide policies on password rules, ensuring you have strong, unique passwords by default. As well as password management, NordPass also enables your team to easily share credentials and notes securely, keeping you productive and secure. My favorite feature, however, is the data breach scanner, which actively monitors for leaks involving business domains, credentials, passwords, and payment information. If a leak is discovered, employees will receive an immediate notification informing them of their compromised email, allowing them to take action immediately. So to see NordPass business in action with a three month trial, head to nordpass.com slash dreams of code and use the dreams of code promo code. You can also click the link in the description. A big thank you to NordPass for sponsoring this video. Now back to looking at our pair of tools. Gripe is a tool for vulnerability scanning of containers and file systems. We can use Gripe to scan a chosen input and produce a list of any vulnerabilities that it finds, as well as their associated CVE and severity. This provides the automation for checking vulnerabilities we were lacking with SIFT. Let's see how Gripe works by using it to scan the latest Ubuntu Docker image at the time of recording. To do so, first install Gripe as per your operating system. You can also check out the GitHub page for Gripe for instructions on how to do so. I'm going to install using Yay because well, you know why. Once that's done, all we have to do is call gripe with our Docker image. We're going to use a pinned image in order to keep it consistent if you decide to run this command yourself. After a short while, we can see a list of results that have come back. This gives us a number of columns with information about any vulnerabilities that gripe finds. The first column is the name of the software that has the vulnerability. Next is the installed version and the type, similar to what we saw in SIFT. There's also the fixed in and vulnerability CVE columns, which we'll take a look at shortly. And finally, the severity column. Fortunately, in the case of these results, most of our vulnerabilities are either low or negligible severity, with one medium. This isn't actually too bad. We can use Gripe to scan any accessible container, including local ones. However, as you saw, container scanning isn't the quickest. And if we're doing this periodically to check for new vulnerabilities within existing containers, well, it can take a lot of time. Fortunately, this is where SIFT and the SBOM comes in. As we've already exported our software bill of materials for our container, Gripe can actually use this for scanning instead of generating its own internal SBOM every time it scans our image. To do so, we just run the following command of Gripe, SBOM, colon, and then the path to our SBOM. I'm going to pipe the output to less just to make the results easier to see. After a short while, we should get back the result. Oh, that's not good. That's a lot of high vulnerabilities and one critical there as well. Clearly this container is pretty exploitable. We're going to need to make some changes to fix these vulnerabilities. Fortunately, Gripe tries to help us out as much as possible. Taking a look at our columns again, let's look at the fixed in and vulnerability columns in more detail. First is the vulnerability column, which lists the associated CVE. We can actually use this CVE to look up the vulnerability and whether or not it applies to our use case. A lot of the time you will have a vulnerability, but you'll make no calls to the associated function or even the program. It's not a good idea to leave those vulnerabilities in your images, but if you're not directly affected, it reduces the urgency to resolve the issue. The fixed in column provides another bit of value, which we can use to actually determine which version of the software this vulnerability has been patched in, if it has been at all. In the case of Jin, we can see there's a few vulnerabilities which have been patched in different versions, with the latest version being 1.9.1. You may notice that our Go version 1.20.3 doesn't have a fixed in version associated. Let's go ahead and check the CVE entry for this one. Heading over to the NIST website, we can see that this issue is related to invalid JavaScript parsing. We can also see this issue no longer exists in version 1.20.4. Fortunately, this doesn't affect us in the code, but still, it's worthwhile updating. To do so, we can first make some modifications in our project's Go mod. Let's go ahead and update Jin to use the latest version. 
With that done, instead of having to rebuild our Docker image to test that everything is okay, we can just use the directory scanning feature of gripe to check everything looks good by running the gripe dir dot command. Okay, awesome, that's looking much better. You'll notice this has fixed a number of downstream dependencies as well, such as our YAML package. By the way, this is what it looks like if we run gripe on our directory before we update Jin to the latest version. Nasty. With our Go dependencies updated, let's go ahead and update our Docker image to resolve the other issues we had. To do that, let's bump up our base image version to version 1.20.5, which is the most recent Go version at the time of recording. Now let's go ahead and rebuild our Docker image. Once that's done, we can use the following command to run gripe against it. Getting back our results, we can see that we're left with two remaining vulnerabilities, each of which is medium severity. Unfortunately, there is no fix for these vulnerabilities at this moment in time, so that's the best we can do. Whilst it's not perfect, it is far better than where we started at. Nicely done. With that, we've managed to perform some simple container scanning and have updated our application image to be more secure than it was when we started. The next steps would be to add this to our automation pipelines in order to catch this at build time and to ensure any new vulnerabilities were detected. If you'd like to see more of that, then please let me know. And remember, thanks to this video's sponsor, NordPass, you can get three months of NordPass business for free by going to nordpass.com forward slash dreams of code and using the dreams of code promo code. The link is in the description. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and a big thank you to my first channel member, Bruno Beltran. I'll see you all on the next one.